yard line of Edward Waters. They'll go back to the triple option attack here. Back to pass is Huntley. He's hit. Ball's on the ground, and it's recovered by Edward Waters. Kennard Boogie Mahone came unblocked and crushed the quarterback and Huntley, and the Tigers will take over. Edward Waters will have it first and 10 from the 44-yard line. Kennard Mahone came unblocked from that Tiger linebacker spot and crushed the quarterback in Desmond Huntley. And the Tigers will have it first and 10 from the You're tuned in to the Greg Ruffin Show. Your weekly look inside Edward Waters football. The Greg Ruffin Show is brought to you by Pepsi, the official soft drink of Edward Waters Athletics. Under Armour, official outfitter of the Tigers. Wells Fargo, together we'll go far. UF Health Jacksonville, proud sports medicine partner of Tiger Athletics. The city of Jacksonville and Edward Waters College. To find out how you can become a Tiger, log on to www.ewc.edu. Now, along with head coach Greg Ruffin, here is the voice of the Tigers, Joshua Jackson. Tigers return off the road. We can get another victory in the win column as they go up to Tennessee to defeat the Phoenix from Cumberland University by a final score of 24-17. Welcome to this week's edition of the Greg Ruffin Show, Coach. Another week, another victory has got to feel very good for you. Yeah, it feels good. I, I tell you what, you know, just coming off to, you know, a close loss that first game, you know, and, 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 and then, of course, you know, the fiasco the second week. You know, it feels good to go on, on the road and, and, and get two in a row. I mean, the kids are getting better uh, week in, week out. And, uh, you know, and I can say the progression is there and we're right where we want to be and what we thought we'd be at this point with a young football program. And it's been a very business-like approach on the road. There's not really a whole lot of, uh, of extracurricular, that, that sort of thing. They've been loose and they've really taken care of business here uh, on the road. The attitude, the demeanor of this young football team is really, it's almost like they're an upperclassman type team, in, in, despite the fact that they're over 50 uh, freshmen on this team. Team, they're really taking care of business here on the road. Well, the biggest thing is that that they understand what what the standard we're trying to set here is. I mean, you know, you know, we like I've said in past shows, you know, we want to get used to winning. You know, and 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 you week in and week out as we continue to do some things in terms of of just being able to have one more point than the, than our opponent has. And they, they understand that when they go on the road, and, and I think, like you said, they they kind of crafted for a young bunch, you know. But it's, just, it's you know, but we we recruited a lot of guys once again that has won before. We got fifty some freshmen that has won before, so it's you know they understand what goes into and all those variables that that take place and what goes on in, in terms of trying to build a winning attitude. And, and it's going to help you know speed up the learning curve for us and get us where we want to be sooner rather than later. We'll go ahead. We'll take our first time out here when we. Come back. We'll have first half highlights of Edward Waters and Cumberland as you're watching The Greg Griffin Show. This is the Pepsi that your father drank and his father drank before he met your grandmother. This is the Pepsi for this model and his mom. Hi, Cindy. Oh, hi, Brittany. Have you met Uncle Drew? This is the Pepsi that's back from the future and back for one last ride. This is the first Pepsi on the moon. What? No. Fine. This is the Pepsi for moonwalkers. This is the Pepsi for every generation. So how do you make it? There's Natasha's way. Be shy. Focus on yourself. Until they focus on you. Then there's Dennis. Work with what you got to get what you don't. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football. Get hurt. Dream over. So how did I get here? by being the hardest worker in the room. How are you gonna get here? From day one, we always came through for our customers. It's how we earned your trust, until we lost it. Today, we're renewing our commitment to you, fixing what went wrong and ending product sales goals for branch bankers, so we can focus on your satisfaction. It's a new day at Wells Fargo, but it's a lot like our first day. Wells Fargo, established 1852, reestablished 2018. Welcome back to the Greg Ruffin Show, Coach. First half highlights of Edward Waters and Cumberland on tap. And 
going into the game, you really wanted to establish being the more physical team. You, we looked at the film and, and saw that there were some advantages that our offensive line and defensive had would have against uh, Cumberland's offensive and defensive lines, and they really established that and really set a tone there in that first half. Yeah, and I think one of the one of the biggest things that we saw as a staff going going into this game is that, you know, one, the one thing that I did analyze was, you know, we, we thought we were going to get some real bad weather. So, you know, of course, you don't want to have that ball flying around in bad weather, you know, and we hadn't turned the ball over all year, you know, but one time. So, you know, of course, we had to pick this game. We forced one in there. Uh, but but I thought that, you know, with them playing as deep as they were in terms of coverage, that from a size perspective that, you know, we had a chance to be able to see if we could establish something that we hadn't been establishing all year, and that was being able to impose our will a little bit. Uh, uh, lean on some people running game wise. First half highlights on tap here from Cumberland, from Lebanon, Tennessee, and Cumberland Stadium here on the Greg Ruffin Show. Sanders approaches the ball. Here's a kick run away here from Rocky Top. It's high and end over end. It will bounce into the end zone and it will be a touchback. And second and four from the 31. He'll take the snap, turn and hand off to the fullback. He's got a bit of room. He's got the first down and more still on his feet at the 50, at the 40, excuse me, getting up to the 42 yard line, bouncing off of defenders is Telvin Rucker. The full, he'll take the snap, turn and hand to the fullback, and he will be stuffed at the line. Maybe a gain of a half. They'll line up in the pistol this time. Huntley takes the snap. It'll be a keeper for Huntley. Huntley up the gut. Huntley with the first down and more. Huntley is going to be stacked up and brought down at around the third. Back to pass is Huntley. He's hit. Ball's on the ground, and it's recovered by Edward Waters. Kennard Boogie Mahone came unblocked and crushed the quarterback and Huntley, and the Tigers will take over. Under center, takes the snap, turns, hands off to Pelham. Pelham with a bit of room. Pelham breaking tackles, gets the first down and more. Outside the numbers at the 40-yard line, he'll be knocked out of bounds. And Jones takes the snap, fakes the handoff. Jones back to pass. Jones flush, looking, looking. Flush now goes over to the left side now and has got all kind of room. Jones to the 30. He gives himself up at around the 28-yard line. And snap, spot, kick, it's up, it's on the way, has the distance. And it is good. He'll take the snap. It'll be a handoff to one of the A-backs, and he is cut down at the 30-yard. Huntley under center. Takes the snap. Turns hands off to the back. That is Rucker. He is brutally pushed. He'll take the snap. Jones back to pass. Looking, looking. Flush in the pocket. Still looking, still looking. Jones still looking. He's going to tuck. He's going to run. Trying to avoid some defenders. He's got the first down and gets his way to the 49-yard line. He was set. He'll take the snap. Back to pass. Looking. Screen over the middle. Catch is made. That's Corey Hammond with the head of steam at the 40. 35 to the 30. To the 25. To the 20. 15. 10. 5. Did he get in the end zone? They'll mark him out at a round. Dot in the eye is Pelham. will take the snap. Turn. Hand off to Pelham. Pelham going up the gut. Pelham is in the end zone. Touchdown, Edward Waters. There's the first rushing touchdown in the career of Jacquez Pelham. The true freshman from Jacksonville played his high school ball at Fort White High School. And the takes the snap. Back to pass is Huntley. Huntley looking, throwing. The catch is made. Huntley will have the ball came out late. And it's going to be picked up by Kimley North. And to the left. Takes the snap. Turn hand off to the full back and rucker. He's got room. 20, 15, 10, 5. And it's a touchdown for Cumberland. A flag is going to get thrown late for a horse collar tackle. <laughs> Starts the penalty yards. Shotgun formation. Jones takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. Jones flushed. Jones looking. He's going to throw deep. Looks for a man. It is bad and intercepted. Intercepted. Coming out of the end zone to the 10. Getting up to the 15-yard line. Looking for a block. And he'll be tackled at the 20-yard line. He'll take the snap. Pitches over to the near side. And he's tackled up and brought down in the backfield. Takes the snap. Back to pass is Huntley. Huntley looking, flush in the pocket, rolling over here to the near side right now. Still looking, still looking, still looking. It's going to throw. It's intercepted. Jalen Thomas has got it. He fumbled the football, and Christian Hayes is going to pick it up at the 30-yard line. Coach, those are the first half highlights here on the Greg Ruffin Show. Looking at the statistics in the first half, you really were able to, to set a tone there, especially on that first drive that Cumberland had, the big hit from Boogie Mahone to get that turnover. As they were mounting a drive, you're thinking, oh, no, they're getting ready to go into the end zone. But Boogie knives in, beats that to a right tackle, gets in there, gets the sack, and really set a tone for how that first half was, and that's really how the game was going to go. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, you know, I, from a momentum perspective, 
you know, they were they were they were driving, and I mean, it was a, it was a momentum killer because it seems that after that drive, they struggled all day uh, trying to run the football, and you know, and they got that reverse off later on in the game, but. I mean, I think, you know, in terms of playing them up front and, and linebacker play and kids flying to the football, I mean, you look at the game that he had, uh, you look at the you look at the game that uh, the other young man had, I mean, uh, they were flying around and had, I mean, either one of those kids could be national player of the year with the stats, uh, him and Jalen, with the stats they put up. But but I think that, that one thing just signified about the whole day that, hey, man, it's going to be a tough road to hold it this week if you're playing El Waters football. And, uh, and and they did a good job. And I think and that, and that kind of flipped us, got the momentum. We go down, we score. And, and you know, I think, we, you know, we got a field goal out of that. But, you know, in terms of what we were trying to do, I think it energized us, jump starters, and got us where we needed to be. John Quest Pelop and Corey Hammond were really a solid one-two punch there yeah. in that first half. Quest got his first uh, rushing touchdown in his EWC career. Those were, again, they hit just a solid one-two punch there on that Saturday. Yeah, I mean, and then they have two, you know, it's, it's, it's funny that they have two two different styles, you know. And, you know, Pelham's, he, you know, Pelham's a banger. And, uh, and then, uh, you know, Corey – being 175 pounds, he, you know, I'm still trying to figure out how he bangs as much. I mean, he's hit, he's banging, spinning, jumping outside. I Man, he's a tough football player. Both of those kids did a great job, and you know, we got got another guy we really want to get in the fold this week, and uh, and Eddie. So we got to get Eddie going this week. So uh, you know, I think that you know, with 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 Montgomery, with Eddie, with with Jaquez, you know, with. Uh, Corey. Corey Hammond. I mean, I mean, we got we got four good backs, and and I mean, and we could put Dale George back there and still. I mean, so there's depth at the running back spot, and I just I just hate it's only one ball to go around. But uh, those guys are tough, and they they're doing some things that are gonna pe- keep people honest because they can catch the ball out of backfield and they can protect. So the key thing with being young is we're gonna just gotta rev up the protection part of it, making sure that they can keep people off the quarterback. Tigers up 10-7 at the half. When we come back, we'll have second half highlights of Edward Waters and Cumberland right here on The Greg Ruffin Show. This is Norman Miller. Last year he had a heart attack and received two life-saving stents. This is Dominic Angiolillo. At UF Health, his research predicts how patients will respond to medicines after surgery. Dominic is a big reason Norman's less likely to have another heart attack, even if he never knows it. And it's invisible connections like these that help us move medicine forward with every patient we serve. Welcome back to the Greg Ruffin Show. Coach, your team up 10-7 at the half. The first time this year that EWC went into the locker room with the lead. So uh, right. what was the message to the team I was trying to maintain that lead going into the second half of play? Be consistent. You know, I think the biggest thing was we just, you know, we were right where we wanted to be. We just had to cut down on a mistake here or there. Let's just keep it consistent. We're going to keep it on the ground. And, and we're going to just keep pounding. I mean, you know, because at, 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 
you know, looking at the weather, I thought it was going to pour down about 3 o'clock, you know, and that was right about halftime, you know, around 3 o'clock, come out of the locker room, and I was waiting on it, and we were kind of blessed, and, and we were very fortunate that, you know, it didn't, it, you know, it started drizzling toward the end, the last two minutes of the game, and then, of course, it started raining, of course, you know, when we got ready to leave out. But, I mean, it held on, you know, long enough for us to be able to establish what we wanted to and didn't cause us any problems. And, uh, and then, like I said, the, the thing was just to, let's just be consistent and, and stay with the game plan and let's cut down on beating ourselves. Like I told the guys, you know, we've been in some situations this year that, you know, let's, let's not let Ill Waters beat Ill Waters, you know. I think we're fine against who we're playing against. Let's just not help them, you know. And I think they did a good job of that in the second half and we prevailed. Tigers up by three at the half. Let's see if they finish. Second half highlights right here on the Greg Ruffin Show. He'll take the snap. Back to pass is Jones. Jones is going to tuck and run. Jones to the 45, and Jones is going to depend on the spot. Takes the snap. Turn, handoff via catch and keeper. A pitch over hit to the near side and with Rome. 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and goes out of bounds at around the 40-yard line on the other. Takes the snap. Back to pass is Huntley. Huntley looking. Huntley throwing over the middle. This one is caught at the 20, at the 15, 14-yard line with the catch spot. Kick up on the way. It was partially blocked. It was. It's no good. Christian Hay punt nearly blocked again, but got away a decent one. Hafner Sullivan will win. He'll take another run at the 40. Hafner will be tackled out of bounds at around the 35 yard line. He'll have to go here in the third. Snap. Spot. Kick. It's up. It's on the way. Did he miss again? He got it this time. Just got it inside the near side right. The snap and off to Hammett. Hammett trying to go over the right side now, bringing a couple Phoenix players. Jones takes a shotgun snap, rolling over to the right, looking, looking, throwing. Got a man wide open. This one is caught. It's caught. Touchdown, EWC. Touchdown, Tigers. Kamari Noble finds Pater for the Tigers. Noble wide open on the far right side and getting into the end zone for a score. He'll take the snap. Turn and hand off to the actually keeper for Huntley, and he's going to be brought down from behind. Look at those white shirts converge on the stop for EWC Jalen. Rushing the back right behind him. Takes the snap. Back to pass is Huntley. Huntley looking. Huntley flushed. Huntley rolling over to the left side now. He'll be hitting cut down. Takes the snap. Turn, hand off. That's Hammett. Hammett. Breaks a tackle, hand at 50, hand at 45, 40, 35, 30, 25, and he goes out of bounds at the 25. Jones will take the snap. We'll roll over to the right side now. We'll look. We'll stop. We're still, still looking, still looking, still looking, still looking. Jones throwing. It is tipped. Did he make the catch? He made the catch at the one-yard line. He caught the ball off of the deflection. Abdul Label with the reception for Edward Waters. It's first and goal for the Tigers at the one-yard line. What a catch by Abdul Labor. Jones under center. Takes a snap. A keeper for Jones. He's in. Touchdown, EWC. Derek Noodle Jones puts the Tigers on top by two scores. 23-10 with the extra point to follow with 4.04 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Two to the far side left, single near side right. Huntley takes a snap, rolling over to the left side now. Looking, looking, points out something. He's going to throw over the middle. The pass is caught. Pass is caught at the 40-yard line of EWC. Looking for a block to the 35 and cut down. And a flag thrown late. Takes a snap. Back to pass. Huntley looking. He's hit. He's going down. Jalen Thomas with the sack for EWC. Takes the snap. Back to pass is Huntley. Huntley flushed, Huntley rolling, Huntley throwing. Back of the end zone, caught, touchdown Cumberland. Touchdown. Kick, it is a squib thing. It's bouncing, and it goes out of bounds, luckily. The ball luckily went out of bounds. It went off of an EWC defender. The Tigers are going to line up in the victory formation here. Jones under center, takes the first knee. Tigers prevail 24-17 on the road against the Phoenix of Cumberland University. Coach, again, as we were talking about to start this, this uh, to start the last segment, team was up 10-7 at the half. 
Wanted to see how they were able to respond, kind of hold on to that lead. Were able to get a two-score lead going to 24-10. They get a, get, did get a cheap touchdown uh, toward the end, but you guys were able to hold on, prevail, do the things that they need to do. It's a happy bus right back to Jacksonville. Yeah, you know, happy coaches when we win. You know? <laughs> so, I mean, I, you know, they got that last touchdown ball, goes right through his hands. It's an easy pick six, and, I mean, you know, you know, we we used to that happening. That's, that it seems like we get one we get one of those up a week. You know, that that pass or the tip pass or what have you. But you know, like I said, the kids remain as constant as the Northern Star. I was proud of them, and you know, we handled ourselves in a first class manner. And uh, you know, I think you know one of the biggest things when you look at you know we we cut our penalty yardage down to 80 yards. You know, after having a 250 some yard penalty game against a Lindsey Wilson just to see, you know, had 10, but only 80 yards. So some of your smaller, you know, infractions, you know, five yard uh, variety. So I was, you know, and we, we're gonna continue to work on that and bring that penalty, penalty deal down. And, and, and that allows us to play some good disciplined football without giving up, you know, cheap, Cheap, cheap penalties and first downs and things of that nature to keep drives going. Your team was able to dominate time of possession, 35-31 to 24-29 for, for Cumberland. Just under 50% on third down, 6 of 13 on third down. Your team was really good, were really good stewards of the football. Once again, uh, Noodle Jones, 7 of 13 passing, 106 yards, a touchdown, uh, and, and one interception. I uh, didn't ask to, to put too much on his plate, but you again, you challenged your offensive line. I remember last uh, well, yesterday at that Friday night <coughs> meeting uh, uh, in Tennessee. You was just pointed at your offensive line saying, if we're going to win this game, it's going to be on your shoulders. You really issued them a challenge. You challenged them really all week long. If we're going to win this game, it's going to be on your shoulders. And those five guys up front really rose to the challenge rose, rose to the challenge, and really took care of business. I, I, I thought it was about time. I just thought that, you know, we had some games where we just, you know, we were a little inconsistent up front, and we just didn't, you know, and even in this game we had our issues. But I tell you what, you know, they did a good job for the most part of the whole game just coming off the ball and, doing some things they needed to do in terms of trying to, you know, just get some good push and, you know, because we got backs that can't hit the hole. And so the, the biggest thing is we needed them to be able to to know, hey, this we're counting on you. You know, I don't think up until this point we had really given them that mandate that, hey, man, you know, I don't plan on throwing all the passes as, 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 you know, evidence of how many passes we throw. You know, we've had some 30, 35, you know, 40 pass games, but, you know, you look at us here passing seven at the 13, you know, I said, hey, I'm going to run the football, and if we're going to win this football, it's going to be on you guys' shoulders. And, and, and to the tune of, you know, 206 yards rushing, I, I can walk away inexplicably and, say, and saying that, hey, I'm very proud of the effort and what they gave us. Corey Hammett finished the day uh, with 16 carries, 108 yards. Uh, just missed getting into the end zone a, a couple times there on, on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Jacques Pellop finished 12 carries for 51 yards. Richard Montgomery beginning to find himself there in the backfield, seven carries for 23 yards. And Noodle Jones, uh, 13 uh, carries for, for 19 yards and a, and, and a touchdown. Uh, they, those guys really, again, up front and running the ball, they were able to really get things done there. Mm -hmm. And even on the receiving end, you know, yeah. Tyler Gilbert with a couple of receptions. Kamari Noble with a big touchdown there in the fourth quarter to get you that, uh, that or the third quarter to get you that uh, that go-ahead score and uh, it was a fourth quarter score uh, uh, there in the fourth quarter for Kamari Noble and uh, you know things are really starting to turn the corner here for this young offense. Yeah and I think you know there's just so much that they still have to learn and as a coach you know you, you're in a position that you, you say you know you don't want to put too much on them because you want to get some things down pat that you know is what do they what do we do well you know when people look at us on family you know I want people to say hey this is what they do and they do it well and when, and when things get kind of knotted up a little bit, they're going to go back to what they do well, and they're going to tell you and, and, and demand, hey, stop us. And that's, a, that's us trying to establish what our true identity is going to be as the, as the future of this program unfolds. So, you know, we got some kids that we can go to and, and some good, you know, they, they're making plays, you know, and, and you know, people are going to play us deep and people are going to do some things to take away. So, and we got to be able to say, if they take it away, what do we do next? You know, and, and that's what running the football like we did this week, it was a chance for us to, to reestablish ourselves in terms of what our identity, identity is and what do we want to do going uh, thus forward. Looking at the team defensively, you're able to hold Cumberland to 144 yards rushing on the ground for an option offense. That's a great number. Right. You have to be able to hold them to, to uh, under 150 yards rushing. We had a hard time uh, that Saturday night trying to figure out who we we're going to recommend uh, for uh, defensive player of the week in the Mid-South Conference. Was it going to be Bo Boogie Mahone with his six right. tackles, uh, two sacks, two uh, fumble, uh, two uh, forced fumbles, uh, a fumble recovery, and uh, two tackles for loss? Or was it going to be Jalen Thomas with five right. tackles, right. Uh, a sack, a tackle for loss, a forced fumble, and an interception? 
interception. So uh, there was really a lot of question as to who we were going to recommend there. Uh, we ended up recommending uh, Boogie Mahomes for his, his great uh, play. Right. Uh, but also Derek Nicholson being able to step in uh, for an injured uh, Royal Allen at one of the safety spots, being able to come in and have a great game on Saturday with six tackles and, uh, you know, almost having an interception there in his first uh, first start of his career. That's true. I mean, once again, this the youth of this program, you know, rearing its head and, we're proud of those guys. I'm proud of all these guys. You know, the returners that's, that that's, that that came back and that that bought in, and, and to the message that we're trying to, you know, what we're trying to sell and and what we want this program to go. And man, they, they you know, the the, the Gavins, the 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 Mahomes, you know, the Jalen Thomases, you know, those guys, the Sid Lewises, you know, our Frederick Tyson. I, I can't say enough about those guys. You know, the Lacorn. You know, a Christian Hayes, all those guys, they bought in, you know, and, and, and it feels good to them because they're having some success, you know, and they're having fun. I, I think the biggest thing is if you're playing this game and you're having fun, then you're going to continue to play this game at a high level. And I'm proud of those guys. They're stepping this thing up. I mean, you know, Christian Hayes, you know, Jalen Thomas, like I said, Mahone, you know, they're out of the top four tacklers, three of them are returners. So it says a lot about, about what they – Thought in terms of this program can go and what they want, what they want to lead this program in terms of where them, what their mark is going to be. You know, Mahone's a senior, uh, Al Frederick Tyson's a senior, uh, Gavin's a senior, and on defense and and uh, pretty much everybody else comes back. So, so we I mean, you know, this thing is just getting getting kickstarted. You know, we got we got about eight nine guys will be back on defense next year. We got about eight nine guys back, maybe nine on offense and. We just got to keep, you know, adding to the Waters family. We just got to keep adding to it, getting better, you know, saying where do we need to patch some things up at and because these kids are going to continue to get better. And that, and as we go in our off-season program, we get bigger, faster, stronger, and we're going to continue to recruit like the Dickens here because I'll tell you what, uh, I think that we're on to something and, and we just got to continue to take each game one week at a time. Well, then we'll take a time out. When we come back, we'll preview this Saturday's big contest as we begin division play against the Seahawks of Kaiser University. You're watching the Greg Ruffin Show. This is the Pepsi that your father drank. And his father drank before he met your grandmother. This is the Pepsi for this model and his mom. Hi, Cindy. Oh, hi, Brittany. Have you met Uncle Drew? This is the Pepsi that's back from the future and back for one last ride. This is the first Pepsi on the moon. What? No. Fine. This is the Pepsi for moonwalkers. This is the Pepsi for every generation. So how do you make it? There's Natasha's way. Be shy, focus on yourself, until they focus on you. Then there's Dennis. Work with what you got to get what you don't. Or you could be like me. Dream of pro football, get hurt, dream over. So how did I get here? By being the hardest worker in the room. How are you gonna get here? From day one, we always came through for our customers. It's how we earned your trust. Until we lost it. Today, we're right. renewing our commitment to you. Fixing what went wrong and ending product sales goals for branch bankers. So we can focus on your satisfaction. It's a new day at Wells Fargo, but it's a lot like our first day. Wells Fargo, established 1852, re-established 2018. Final segment here on the Greg Ruffin Show, Coach. We begin the meat and potatoes of the schedule. Very important uh, next few weeks here for this young football team. Division play. Uh, if you want an opportunity to go to the playoffs, you got to find a way to win these division games, and it starts this Saturday against uh, a first-year program in Kaiser that came out like gangbusters, won their first two games against uh, uh, Bluefield and against Pikeville, but mm -hmm. uh, kind of ran into some tough sledding over these past couple of weeks against some very good ranked teams, some highly ranked teams, and Bethel on the road and their home opener last week against the ninth 
highest ranked team in the country in Georgetown. Uh, they fought like uh, 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 the Dickens to get back in that contest after trailing for a majority of that game. They ended up falling uh, just short 21-15 against uh, uh, Georgetown. But it's going to be a tough uh, game. Uh, you got a lot of South Florida kids on your team that are going to be going home. It's going to be an emotional homecoming for them, but uh, it should be a fun game this Saturday. Yeah, uh, Doug, Doug Sosha is doing a great job with that program. Uh, like I said, last year they brought in uh, some guys in red shirt them. They practiced. They got the foundation underneath them in terms of where they wanted to go with the program. And, uh, you know, I mean, they, they kind of mirror us a little bit. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they got some young guys that are striking defensively. They move around. They bring a lot of pressure from various angles. So that's one of the things that we, we, we got to do a good job of blitz pickup. And we got to be able to catch them, you know, when we catch them out, out, out of sync a little bit. We got to be able to be able to hit them with a big one. I, I think the biggest thing is uh, I don't see much of a difference between these two football teams. We're both young, but we both got talent and, and some kids that are playing at a very high level. So uh, it'll be in interesting, like, as you spoke upon you know, a lot of guys going home this weekend. And, and uh, we want to make, you know, reference to them just being being very even killed. Don't get too high, don't get too low. And, Let's not make mistakes, you know. Once again, let's not let Edward Waters help somebody beat Edward Waters. And I think that uh, as long as we can handle the pressure and do some things uh, up front, you know, we're going to have to be creative a little bit because, like I said, they got talent. So this is going to be one of those games in terms of the scheme may change here and there a little bit. And like I said, with them bringing as much heat as they like to bring, you know, it, it'll, it'll be interesting. But I tell you what, you're going to have two fine football teams that's going to go at it at 12 noon right there on their campus. And be, after being on the road and going to uh, going to Alabama and going to Tennessee and you know finally being able to come back in your home state after being away for for so long, it's it's, it's going to be fun to see how these two teams kind of match up. As you said a few moments ago, these are very two teams that are you know kind of mirror images of each other. So many freshmen, so many sophomores for Kaiser, and the same thing here at EWC. So it should be a fun and interesting matchup here as we open up a division play. Well, I tell you what, you know, I think one of the one of the things that you know the respect is there for their program. Uh, and they hadn't played a game. I mean, when they came out with the preseason uh, prognostications, they had them ranked above us. I mean, and that's the thing that I tell our guys. You know, we we, we got to get we, we we got a you know a program that's 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 been here. I'm not going to say how established we've been, but we've been a program. We you know had a team here, but for a team to to, to get ranked ahead of us in the preseason, and they never played a game. That says a lot with the respect that they're giving them, and it, but it might add to the disrespect that that, that we've we've gotten as a program. So I mean, that's one of the things that I'm not gonna harp on it too much. But I mean, I kind of you know when I saw the rankings, and I said, well, man, we're ranked last, and so I mean, you know, we got new staff, new players, the whole nine. So it just gives us a chance to show the people that didn't rank us, you know, in terms of where we, you know, thought we could be in the conference. And I understand why they picked us, you know. At last, I understand it. I ain't mad at nobody, but it, at the end of the day, we got to earn the respect. You know, like I told the guys last week, when they say our name in the future, we want them to put some respect on our name, and that's what we're doing week by week. We're trying to we're trying to garner respect from individuals that 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 hadn't had a lot of respect for this program in the past. And, and, and the past is the past. You know, it's it's about the new Edward Waters. Where we Trump? Where are we going? Who are we now? And, and where we want people to see us going forward. And there's going to be a lot of fans there for both teams, especially for uh, for Kaiser, but also for EWC, with uh, it being a large South Florida alumni base down there. As we said a few months ago, about 20, 30, about 30, 40 kids on our on our roster uh, hail from that South Florida area. So uh, it's going to be a big crowd down there. For, uh, hopefully, a, a large crowd in purple and orange down there for EWC. Yeah, uh, and, we, and we want we 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 want this our, our people to be able to see us play. And we want them to come out in droves. I mean, these kids, they deserve your support. They're busting their tails and, you know, in the classroom. They're doing a good job on the football field trying to get this program, you know, you know, going in the right direction. And, and, and wherever we are, we're close to alumni. We encourage all alumni to come out and really, really come and look at your product. I mean, at the, at the end of the day, I tell these kids, you know, you know, I flew here. They grew. They, they're going to grow here, you know. And uh, they, they got to understand, you know, this is their home, and and they, you know, it's a family, and they got they got surrogate family members, just about everywhere they go. These people have been branded because they received their degree from the illustrious Edward Waters College, and we 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 got to continue to build our brand, and build and build our, our our fan base as as we get people saying, you know what, I'm going to go support my team. Uh, the <clears throat> Tigers open up conference play or division play this Saturday in. Uh, 
West Palm Beach, Florida, as the Tigers take on the Seahawks of Kaiser University. Kickoff will be at 12 o'clock p.m. at the Kaiser University football field. And for more information, log on to our website at EWCTigerPride.com. For the head coach, Greg Ruffin, for our full director, Linton Mickey, and for all those who make this program possible, I'm Joshua Jackson. We'll talk to you again next week for another exciting episode of The Great Ruffin.